let us rise and face the processional cross as we sing our opening hymn, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord, on this Sunday, Pentecost. Before we begin with the invocation, as we have said, it is Pentecost Sunday, and we focus on our gospel reading and allow God to remind us what is Pentecost, why do we celebrate it, and in fact, why is it not celebrated as high as Easter or Christmas, for it is a very, very important festival Sunday. But before we begin, and as is our custom, let us greet one another around us, extending the peace of Christ.
So now we're all used to having the music start, Tim, to have the cue to have a seat. But now that we've done the processional hymn, we don't know what to do right now. <laughs> Is that why you were saying, it's you, Pastor? It's you, Pastor? Oh, okay. Remembering our baptism, friends in Christ, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Let us now have a have a moment of silence for us to reflect upon our hearts and to realize our sinfulness, but at the same time, remember God's promise of forgiveness. We take a moment of silence. Hear the good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you. And it is for his sake that he has forgiven you all of your sins. And so therefore as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. It. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your, lo of your love. Alleluia. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Continue the Kyrie.
Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Ezekiel. The, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live and I will lay sinews upon you and you shall, will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, of, behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and the flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied that he has commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all feared with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own name, native language, Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the mighty works of God, and all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and address them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, 
and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, that the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the day of the Lord comes, that great magnificent day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise as we continue with the Alleluia in verse. Alleluia, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father, nor me. But I have said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. At this time, I call forward all the young children to the front of the church for a children's message. Good morning, friend. Good morning. Good morning. Friends, I have a couple questions and things. So, so today is Pentecost. Can you say that with me? Pentecost. So Pentecost is a day when who came to us? So Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, right? Easter, Jesus dies and resurrects. On Pentecost, we celebrate who comes to us. See, on this cross, there's a special cross for Pentecost. It, yes, you are right, <laughs> very much so because of the Trinity. But the Holy Spirit. So you guys were baptized this last year, weren't you? And that's when we know the Holy Spirit entered your hearts because of the promise. And the Holy Spirit has entered your hearts. So let me show you a couple things in the church right now we have hanging up. What is up here on this banner at the very top? What's that white object there? What does that represent? It kind of, it looks like a shield. That's always a good answer. Let me show you this one. Right here, the white shape. A bird, yeah, a bird. Now, what kind of bird is a dove? And that's the kind of bird that's here 
I do believe it's on our front here. It's, oh, no, the flames are up here. So the dove reminds us that when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came out of the heavens and entered Jesus, and it was in the shape of a bird, a dove. And so we are reminded today that as Jesus got the Holy Spirit, you have the same spirit that Jesus does. And that makes you not just any child. You're a child of God. A child of God, of Jesus. That's right. Will you pray with me? Congregation is invited to follow along. Say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, thank you I thank you for making me, for making me your, child, your child, your family, by giving me your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Amen. Thanks for coming up, friends. You may go have a seat with your loved ones as we continue singing in our next hymn. Grace and peace be to you all from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text being used for our message today comes from our gospel reading of John. So if you want to use your hymnal to take notes or your personal Bible, I would invite you to do that. My sermon focus title is, Why is Pentecost not celebrated like, like Easter is? What I'm trying to say is, how much pomp and circumstance do we have around Easter? 
a lot, right? Quite a bit. Lots of flowers and the cross and the many services before Easter Sunday and with Christmas, same thing. But Pentecost, I mean, we, we changed the colors from white to red, signifying the end of the Easter season. And now we have Pentecost and Holy Trinity and then the general year of the church, green, good old green. But we don't have all the pomp and circumstance. And why not? Pentecost by far, is one of the most important and greatest things that God did for humanity. Second only to literally giving himself to die and to rise for us. But he did all of that in order that we could be like him one day, that is, resurrected. But there's only one way that can happen, and that is when we have the Spirit in us making us a new person, making us part of his family, allowing us to believe in the unbelievable. We call that faith. The Spirit gives us this strength. And so, I think it's right, salutary, then important that we put some historical context into this into this great and magnificent day we call Pentecost. In the Old Testament, all the times it talks about, by and large, the, about the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit came upon, fell upon, uh, drove. It was not the same picture that you, that you see in the New Testament. In the New Testament, it uses words like uh, the Spirit entered, the, the Spirit led, um, the Spirit rested upon, as in entering, like in Pentecost. And it was not, definitely not, just poured out. It only came to certain individuals as the kingdom of God reigned and ruled in the Old Testament. Jesus rules in the New Testament, bringing the kingdom of God, still led and ruled by the Spirit. But the Spirit is acting very different here. <laughs> it's literally being poured out on all people. And anyone baptized in God's name, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, anyone baptized in my name, says Jesus, they shall receive the Spirit. Baptism. And there's nothing that can stop that promise. Not doubt or even unbelief. You baptize in the name of God, the promise is true. You can't stop God. <laughs> you definitely can't stop God's promises. This it's something that is remarkable and something that is often, too often, forgotten of how the Holy Spirit worked in the Old Testament compared to when Jesus had the Spirit poured out onto him. And as last Sunday we talked about, it's by no coincidence that right after that, Jesus began his earthly ministry of three years. It says a spirit drove him into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. In other words, Jesus took the fight to Satan. It's kind of like, Jesus is here. Hey, this is my kingdom, Satan, not yours. Never was, never will be. And Satan tried for 40 days to talk Jesus out of it, to tempt him, to make him fall off of his throne. Eh, it didn't work. We're allowed to see the last three temptations, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus overcomes them. And the last one is 
bow down to me, and this is when Jesus had had it. And he simply said, be gone, for it is written, I shall only worship the Lord my God. And Satan didn't go, well, one more. No, Jesus had said, you're done, go away. And he had to listen. Because Jesus is king. That same Holy Spirit that led Jesus into the wilderness gave him that power we have today. So why do we not emphasize that fact more? That's some pretty powerful stuff. <laughs> the Spirit that led Jesus to do his ministry, we have that same Spirit, that same boldness, that same love, Yep. So what prevents? Is it our, our fear? Maybe, maybe doubt? I know for me, often, it is fear. Maybe of people judging. Satan is always there trying to get you to doubt. But if you ask the Spirit to give you an opportunity to share the good news, trust me, He's going to do it. <laughs> Be ready. But that's an exciting thing, not a uh-oh thing. We should be praying every day when we wake up, God, today is yours. Thank you for this day. And if it is your will, give me an opportunity to be your witness. Which is what happened in the ascension and when the Spirit was poured out. Immediately, the apostles were given a very big be my witness opportunity <laughs> as we read Peter standing up and proclaiming the truth. Not judging, but proclaiming the truth. So, it is good that we read these differences. So, uh, in Acts 2, chapter 4, as we have read, it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak. It doesn't say, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and holy moly, it was great. No, what does it say? They were filled with the Holy Spirit, which, number one, is very different than Old Testament. They were filled with the Spirit, and then what? What did they do? They spread it, but, you know, how do we do that? Speak! They started speaking, not just in their own tongue, but all the tongues of the languages that were in the town that day, that week, for the Holy Week. And so every nation under the sun would have been there and heard their language. And it is to those people that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon. Second, the Holy Spirit does something very specific. In verses 8 through 11 in today's reading from John, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away, so the Helper will come. If I go, I'll send him to you. And when he comes, he, the Holy Spirit, will convict. This is an interesting word, convict. Convict. You're convicted. Those of you who have with a <coughs> lawyer background, <coughs> El Presidente, when you're convicted, is that a good thing? No. Hmm. Interesting. The word here in the Greek, he will convict, means he will strike you. He will open your eyes to see. He will convict you in the sense that he's going to make you realize something different, wake you up, knock you on the head with a brick kind of thing, hit you over the head with a scoop shovel. He's going to get your attention. He's going to convict you, break your heart of stone. That kind of emphasis in the Greek. So let's read this. When the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. Those three things. Number one, 
he, concerning sin, he's going to convict them, open their eyes, so to speak, to sin, because they do not believe. He's going to cut to the heart because they don't believe. He's going to cut to the heart concerning righteousness because Jesus is going to the Father and y'all, <laughs> you will not see me anymore. He's going to wake people up to realize that Scripture is being fulfilled in their midst. He's going to wake them up about their sin. He's going to wake them up about who he is, the righteous king, and then wake them up concerning judgment because the ruler of the world is judged. He's talking about Satan, sin, and death. They are judged, and they are judged as defeated. Jesus with the victory. How often have we slowed down to see that Jesus actually speaks to those three things at Pentecost? So what's that mean for us today? Brothers and sisters in Christ, the same spirit that Jesus was given to do these things, so too we have. And so I ask you, I invite you to remember your identity. That is not a weak one, but a very powerful one. A spirit that gives us the strength to do what Peter did. Simply proclaim what has happened, the truth, the good news of Jesus. It's interesting when you read when Peter got done preaching the good news about Jesus and then also saying, by the way, you murdered this guy. <laughs> Verse 37 in Acts 2 says, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said, what should we do? He said, repent. In the Greek, which literally means change your mind. So he says, change your mind and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit as promised. But that begins with the phrase, cut to the heart. What was the Holy Spirit come to do? To convict. Another way of saying that is to cut to the heart. To convict you is, is like a truth hitting you in the head and going, Oh, you're right. It's like a revelation. That's the emphasis here. The Holy Spirit cuts to the heart. You're here because the Holy Spirit has cut you to the heart in some way. And you have come to hear the good news. And so now we, as God's people, have been asked by God himself to do likewise. Go be my witnesses. To the end of the age, to the end of the earth, whatever that may mean. And especially in your communities. Go share the good news. And we must not be afraid about what we will say. Who convicts? Who breaks? Who cuts to the heart? Is it us or the Spirit? Spirit. Say it loudly. The Spirit. Oh, you Lutherans. The Spirit! The Spirit! <laughs> the Spirit cuts to the heart. I'm not talking about when you try and like condemn someone because of their sin. That's wrong. You condemn, you shall be condemned. You judge, you shall be judged. Be careful. That's not what we're talking about. But when we are called to be witnesses of, of the kingdom of God, of what Jesus did for us and for everyone on this earth, that's called storytelling if you want to get down to it. But it's the greatest story ever written and changes the hearts of man the gospel. And so we go and we share this good news and allow the Holy Spirit to convict the hearts of mankind. We simply get to be part of the process as humble servants. 
like tools in the hand of the Father, Spirit and Son. So go in boldness, my friends, and go in peace. And know that the words that you will say, and I ask you boldly to pray for those opportunities, they will come. Don't be worried about what you will say. As it is written, he will give you the words. <laughs> He'll give you the words. This wasn't in my sermon written. I was going to close at this point. Some of you are saying, oh, Lord, oh, no. Pastor's going to keep going. But this, this last week, God uh, challenged me. He reminded me to make sure I put my hands and my feet where my mouth is. I was called by Lutheran Church Charities about the tragic accident with Marco. And they said, will you go over there and pray with those high schoolers? They're, they're starting to gather. We're going to bring comfort dogs and we're going to get the uh, mercy heart. And I said, uh, well, and right there in that instant, I was tempted. I was tempted. I was like, well, you know, I, I have a funeral to prepare for tomorrow. You know, I, I need to, you know, polish up the sermon for today. I don't know. Th that ran through my mind. But I said, wait a, wait a minute. In my mind, this happened in like, a, you know, like one of those split second feelings, thoughts, whatever you call it. But God's like, don't do this, Pastor. You know what's more important. And so I said, absolutely, I'll go. And so I went and I prayed with the best friend, Preston. I did not know that later that evening when we went to the vigil, as the mission leadership team went with me, that God would use me to stand in front of a couple hundred people and share the good news. I brought my little, it's called an emergency stole, not that I needed it, but I brought it just in case if I, went, if, if I was going to be called to speak. I didn't know if their priest was going to be there. He wasn't the first night. He was there the second night. Can't be everywhere, right? But when I got there, there was all these people mourning and crying and no gospel. And I felt the Spirit move me. Part of me fought it a little bit. I have to be honest. I was like, do I really want to go up there? They are a majority uh, Serbian, and so they're Orthodox, and they believe in a lot of the same things we believe. That was not a problem. But it was more of, I didn't know their culture. So I just said, <laughs> I don't think I even told the MLT this, but in my head I, I kind of went, fine, God. <laughs> I will go. So I went, and I talked to their, their leaders, and I humbly asked, I'm, I'm a pastor, humble servant of the Lord, I, I'm willing to pray and read the good news if you will allow it. And press then their that friend vouched for me. Little did I know that that was a very big deal to allow someone other than Orthodox to, to, to get in front of them. He said, but this is important for the youth, the, the kids, they said. They need to hear something right now. So yes, please, thank you, go. And so I had the opportunity to share the resurrection peace. I had the opportunity to share the good news with these high schoolers that were just crying, weeping. And they were given hope. A light in the darkness. This was not me, friends. This was the Spirit, 100%, driving me to be challenged and there was a, just a split second there. I almost said no. Now, have there been times in the past I have said no? Yes. Because of selfishness. So when God calls upon you,
it'll be okay. God will give you the words. He just wants a willing heart. I don't even remember what I said because it wasn't me speaking in that moment. It was definitely the Holy Spirit. It comes in bits and pieces, but I know God was just taking me by the by the clerical <laughs> and using me. So be not afraid. The Holy Spirit that we have been given is more powerful than we will ever understand. He will lead you on straight paths. He will give you the words and he will give you peace and comfort in hard times. And he will also lead you into circumstances that require faithfulness, meaning share the good news. And so I say with great joy, but also with great conviction that this is who we are, go in peace and serve the Lord. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray it. Amen. As we continue with our service, brothers and sisters in Christ, please rise as we confess this one true faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continue the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, today we pray for the abundance of the fruits of the earth, that there may be plentiful harvests around the world, that you may bless us with what we need. And so, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Father, we pray for all of the graduations coming upon us, many of our members with children and knowing friends, and other families with children, so many graduations, so many young people going into the next chapter of their lives. Grant them strength. Grant them peace. Grant them courage to enter the days ahead with confidence. Heavenly Father, we lift them up unto you and we pray that you would protect them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Father, we pray for the sick, suffering, and the dying. 
We especially lift up to you the Tegan family as they mourn their loss. We pray that you'd give them peace. We also lift up to you the family and friends of Marco uh, Niketic from GBS, from the high school. Please grant their family and friends peace. We lift up to you our family members here who have asked for prayers and have personal situations. Margaret, Joseph, Rich, and Glenda. We also pray for our homebound members, Madeline, Carol, Ruth, and Darlene. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Father, we lift up to you pastors, teachers, missionaries, and especially the church general, that all the people of God may proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God of Jesus Christ, the King of the kingdom, to all people, to their communities, and to everyone who needs to hear it. For there is so much darkness in this world, and you are the light that the darkness cannot overcome. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the unity of this congregation, the unity of of all Lutheran congregations, the unity of the church general, of Christians all around the world, that we would be unified under the one true faith so that as many people as possible can come to know you, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and, in, and defend all of us. Gracious Lord. Amen. We continue by singing our offertory. <laughs> seated. As the ushers come forward to grab the offering plates, I would just remind everyone, uh, please fill out a connection card if you have any questions, especially if you are a visitor this morning. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. We don't ask that you would be feel obliged to give. We simply ask that you would be fed by the word and sacrament that you hear and receive today. Let us collect our gifts for the kingdom of God.
please rise. Heavenly Father, please accept these our gifts. Use them, we pray, boldly to further your kingdom in this place. That as many people as possible may be convicted by your Holy Spirit, cut to the heart by your Spirit, and realize you as Lord of all. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, we continue with Holy Communion. If your confession is our confession, in that you believe that Jesus is the one and only true Lord, that he has died and risen, that we are sinners and we need Jesus' forgiveness, that somehow in a mysterious way this bread and wine is also the body and blood of Jesus as he says in his very own testament. These are your confessions, they are ours, and you are invited to join us as the one true church here at the altar. We also remind you that if you want the chalice if the individual cups come around and you would rather have the chalice, the common cup, please put your hands out in front of you like this, and I will come to you. If you need gluten-free bread, simply say gluten-free when the bread comes around. We'll have it ready for you. And if you need non-alcoholic wine, it is in the center of the individual cups. Let us continue with Holy Sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For this the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify his most glorious name, evermore praising him in saying. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. And so with repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood upon the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way also, after supper, Jesus took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink. This cup is the New Testament of my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. 
Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Therefore, as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we do proclaim Christ's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us now your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your cross and passion, your death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into the heavens, and your coming for the final judgment. And so humbly we ask, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us rise and praise God by singing the Nuck the Menace as taken from Luke chapter 2. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that he may rule and direct us according to your will. Comfort us in all our temptations and afflictions. Defend us from all error, and lead us into all truth, that we being steadfast in faith, may increase in all good works, and in the end, obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you all and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with a few announcements before we continue with the dismissal and closing hymn. As Mike comes up, I just want to thank you all for your generosity shown as we have gone through this phase of thriving into the future to become relevant to the community around us uh, by the wall of generosity. When you walk out to the left, you know, you guys have given uh, much of your treasure and have been willing to give of your time. So just know that emails will be coming soon for that time to come when we will start painting and stuff. So uh, please see what has been already done with time, talent, and treasure on the gener wall of generosity. And again, I thank each and every one of you for being so generous so that we can continue in faith and continue to renovate our facility so that we can be a place where people can meet Christ. The floor is yours, Mike. All right. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to say thank you for the Christiansons for hosting our dinner with friends last night. Uh, right. We had a wonderful time last night at their house. Uh, please keep an eye out for more dinner with friends uh, coming. Uh, we'll probably be doing more, especially as the start of the next school year comes along. We'll be doing more. Uh, but it's a wonderful, it was a wonderful time where we could just have dinner together and share stories and learn more about each other. So it was a lot of fun. So please join us next time we have it. Uh, start with youth or Sunday school because I forgot every other week. Uh, so youth, uh, children's Sunday school. Uh, today was the last week. We will be taking a break for the summer. Um, but we will uh, reach out to everybody at the start of summer when we'll be kicking that off probably sometime after Labor Day. So, But for now, Sunday school will be stopping. For youth, we will be having a youth event tonight. Um, it, for any of our youth, 6th grade and above, uh, it, we'll be having an event. Tonight we'll be talking about the National Youth Gathering for part of it, just an initial kickoff meeting. So this is for any of our youth that will be in high school, ending eighth grade next year, or all the way through high school. Pretty much anybody between 13 and 19. 
uh, will be able to join um, the youth at the National Youth Gathering. Uh, or any kids older than that could also look into being a young adult volunteer as well. Uh, but today we'll be learning about all that information, talking through it really briefly, really quick, and then we will be having a video game, Kids versus Parents. We'll be doing one-two switch, uh, Battle Kids versus Parents, and that'll be a lot of fun too. So anybody who can join us, please come uh, and uh, join us. Then on May 30th, we will be doing, Thursday, May 30th, will be our first a grill night and we'll be doing an extra special. We'll be kicking it off. The kids from our open arms will be singing uh, for us at 5.30. And then after that, we'll present uh, all of the kids that are here with a Bible. And then we'll be having in our gym a Bible tools and studies. So helping parents and kids uh, how to use those Bibles, how to use them effectively for different ages. Uh, so please join us for that. And then right after that, we will be having the grill night out in the back, uh, come for hot dogs, sausages, uh, and some family and friendship. We'll have a lot of fun, but that is May 30th. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're very excited to, to have as many open arms families as we can come uh, with their children, receive their maybe their first Bible, and to have a blessing, and to go and learn. Okay, not, now what, right? There's always that now what, I got a Bible. And so the uh, lots of stations to go to this is how you can read to them. This is how you can do a hands-on activity with them. This is how you can apply it to your life with them. Lots of fun, lots of applicable things for parents. So please come and, and, and join us and see how you can help. There will be a sign up eventually in the narthex for how you can help with that. And now, let us rise so we can be dismissed to go have some coffee and fellowship. 15 minutes after, please come back in here because we have a town hall meeting where I will update you with our renovations, uh, both in the center and then the exterior being renovated as well. So please come, Q&A, and update Town Hall after donuts and coffee. Receive you the dismissal. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.